want to get their attention? You're louder than me, right? Yeah, we are not kissing. Don't they do that at weddings? Yeah, no. <laughs> It was a nice try. <laughs> um, <laughs> as promised, I am going to turn this show over to Ashley. Um, she's making a bid tonight um, on becoming our baker here. So um, I'm going to all rate her and judge how this kind of oh, lies. <laughs> No pressure. She didn't know that to now because I didn't want to have any extra pressure on her. All right. Um, All right. But she's going to make the pecan pie, and I'm going to turn it over to her and take it away, Ashley. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is the bourbon caramel sauce, and then I'll go into the crust and then the filling itself. All right. So let's see if I can get this going. Okay. So we're going to start with some brown sugar and butter right in our saute pan. So here we have water and a little bit of vanilla extract. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. And we're going to let this go on high. All right, and we're just going to stir this so our sugar doesn't burn and our butter melts. You know that your sugar is fully incorporated and your butter's melted. So then we're going to add heavy cream. And this will calm it back down. So while that's going, I'll start on the crust. So get all of this. Thank you. Okay, now I know when people hear crust, they tend to shy away from it, but this is basically a foolproof crust. You can't mess it up at all. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some butter and sugar. <coughs> So it's starting to get a boil again so we can turn it down a little bit. You just want it to simmer for probably five to seven minutes. Once your sugar and your butter are fully incorporated, we can add, we only need two eggs. We want to do one at a time. We got our second egg in here. Let that go for a minute. So it's really important in baking to scrape the bowl and scrape the paddle. As you can see, it kind of clumps up. So it's not incorporated in there very well. So you want to scrape it down, get all that butter back in there. Let that go for a little bit longer. It's going to kind of have like a gross kind of texture. I, I don't really know how to explain it. It almost looks curdled, but it's normal. It's what it's supposed to look like. It kind of looks like scrambled eggs. That's, that's pretty good. All right, we're going to add our flour. It's 12 ounces of flour. How much flour? 12 ounces. I use all-purpose. You can use um, bread flour if you want. While that's going, we'll take this off. And we'll add our bourbon. Whisk it in. And from here, it's still kind of thin. You can kind of see how thin it is. As it cools, it's going to thicken up in the caramel sauce. You can use it here if you want. I like to chill it. So I'm going to carefully give it to Chef. I'm going to use my hand, sorry. I have to. OK. Basically, if you had chocolate chips, you'd have chocolate chip cookies. So you're going to wrap this in plastic, put it in your fridge. It doesn't need to go overnight. I found 10, 15 minutes in the fridge makes it turn into a rock. So it's pretty quick. And then once it goes in the fridge, it's going to look like this. So you're going to roll this out. It doesn't matter if it cracks or if you have a hole in it, because like I said, it's very forgiving. You can basically take this into pieces and you want, if you want, and just put it in your pan. and make like a puzzle and it'll still work the same as if you rolled it out. A little trick that I found when I was in my baking classes is if you move your hand around on it, you can tell where it's thicker. So you've all probably made pies or something like that where you get a really thick side and a really thin side. 
So that's one way you can prevent it. Just kind of run your hand around it and you can tell where the uneven sides are. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, that's So you want to do a little bit of spraying here. And then... Sidekick. <laughs> thank you. And whenever I do cakes or anything in a pan that doesn't have the spring form bottom, I like to just put a little bit of flour. And another easy trick I learned in school, other than trying to pick this up and slide it on there, take your rolling pin, roll it up on your rolling pin, and then pick the whole thing up and then just roll it right over, just like that. You can see how it's kind of falling apart a little bit, but you can make it work. And I'm literally just forming it to the pan. Even if there's holes, I'm just kind of moving my fingers around, pinching the holes, stretching it out if I need it. Go all the way around. And then you can take pieces off from the side, stick them where you have a hole. Just like that. The cons. And you want to put them in first because the filling that we make is really heavy. So if you put the filling in first and then you put the pecans, they're just going to kind of float on the top. So they really won't get incorporated. So you can add as much or as little as you want. I like a lot, so. We're gonna move to the filling. Okay, and this filling is just as easy. It's basically throwing everything in the bowl and letting it go until it's incorporated. So we have brown sugar, butter, and vanilla. We're gonna put that in. I have five eggs here, and we're gonna put those in one at a time, just like we did with the dough. You don't have to wait for the butter and the sugar to be incorporated. You can just kind of do it. As you're adding the eggs, it'll all kind of come together. I'm going to add 12 ounces of corn syrup. I use light corn syrup because I already have brown sugar in here, so I don't want the filling to be too dark. But you can do dark corn syrup if you want to. And, of course, brandy. Wouldn't be dessert without the booze. And this is also a preference thing, too. You can add as much or as little as you want. All right, that looks good. It's so good. You can smell that brandy, hmm? Or uh, bourbon, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna take our filling and we're just gonna pour it right in here like this. Right on top. And then you're going to put this in the oven at 425 for 10 minutes. So the pecans that are on the top, they brown up a little bit. And then you're going to drop it down to 350 for 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven, until you can jiggle it and it's not, it doesn't have that like liquid in the middle. It just looks set. And once it bakes, you want to cool it because it rises like a cheesecake does and then it'll fall. So this is what it looks like after. We're going to cut into this. You can see how gooey it is from the filling. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a piece out. Might be ugly, but we'll see how, see how I do. All right, and then we're going to take our caramel sauce that we had that is now cooled. And I just like to do a little bit of a drizzle just like this. And that's it. You can add whipped cream if you want. You can do powdered sugar. You can add some fruit to it. And that's it. Bourbon pecan pie. Well, thank you for coming. I hope you all enjoyed your dinner this evening. And thank you for helping us raise a lot of money for Loaves and Fishes. Yep. Um, we have some really great bidding opportunities tonight. It's our, first, it's our first time back doing this. Um, we got into a little groove when we were up in uh, Brookline. It was a totally different place. The kitchen was right there, and so the kitchen's on the other side of the building now, and we do a lot of stuff. But we've come a long way, and we come, you guys did it, you know, and I appreciate it. We all do, all of us. Mm -hmm. All the employees have come with us. I mean, it's, it's all family, and it's, it's turned out to be a great thing. So we really appreciate all your support. And here's the pie. <laughs> That's the jingle bell rock